you have now decreased, and the pills too, you have now decreased your immune system. And one shot, why do you think that, like, if you have to get cortisone shots in your knees, they only allow you two per year? It's not because that cortisone shot's going to last six months, because i got news for you, it's not. Okay? But why is it they only allow you, and they don't want to give you two a year? Because they know, they know it's going to shut down aspects of your immune system. The pills will do. Okay? Then we come out with our little non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Aleve, Advil, Motrin. Huh? Tylenol for some that they know, believe it or not. The non-steroidal, okay, they don't have the steroidal effect of affecting the immune system, okay? They do help decrease inflammation in the grand scheme of things, okay, can be the better choice, the better option, because they supposedly affect the inflammation in the area and help stop the pain, okay? With the goal of it being that, okay, this really is reducing the inflammation and therefore if I get rid of the inflammation, I'm going to get rid of the pain in my body. What has spun off from those? Natural anti-inflammatory. Can you think of any? Turmeric? Curcumin? Okay, so now what else has kind of come to light based on inflammation in the body? Okay, they have discovered diet contributes to it, which therefore is going to contribute to the pain. Okay, they now know that a lot of um, problems within the body are because of the inflammation we walk around with every single day. Being able to keep inflammation down is supposed to better your health, have less um, impacts on your immune system, therefore keeping cancers in check. There's a lot coming out because of that. All right. Now, getting back to the question about those impulses, we've already talked about that a okay. bit. Okay, we've already talked about the channels and the movement of the sodiums and everything like that. Okay, when we talk about these signals that are going to get passed along, okay, signals can range in anything from minor to strong. I stumped my toe. And I don't stump my toe and be like, ow. Okay, for the most part, we'll stump our toe and automatically be, ow, ooh, ah, ee, ah, ah, ah. Okay, a lot of other things we might be mm -hmm. having come along with that. Okay. But then, wait a minute. I can have something like maybe a tear and some cartilage that at first, when it happens, you're just, you know, as my husband would say, I dawdle. Okay? You're dawdling, honey, which is what I told him first. You know? Okay. You're dawdling, honey. You're just dawdling along. And you might go, 
Well, that was interesting. But it's not really pain. Three days later, you're in so much pain, you're almost in tears. What's the difference? All right, so cartilage doesn't have nerves. It waits for the tissues around it to get involved, correct? Well, no, it's, it's trying to fix it. Yep, it's trying to fix whatever went wrong, which means that white blood cell, the immune system, which is going to be bringing about pain, okay? Trust me on that. Well, what about the one that's not there? Where it was like immediate, <laughs> ooh, ow, okay, but then within 10 seconds, you don't think about it anymore. The strength of your stimulus, stimulus can change. The Not only the strength, but whether that potential is continuous. All right. One of the things that we saw with the muscular system, the muscular system, if the stimulus was continuous, we saw that that muscle contraction went into tightness. All right? Does everybody remember that? The same muscle contraction. Very painful. Anybody in here ever got a Charlie horse that wasn't painful? Not that I know of. Okay? I mean, you see people get a Charlie horse and they're jumping up and down and screaming and hollering and trying to do everything they can to get that muscle to release. Same thing can happen with the transmission of the action potential of the nerve. So the way that we study, you guys remember how with the muscle we studied one fiber at a time? Okay, we, we study one impulse at a time. Now let me explain to you what that means. When I look at my nerve right here, my nerve can be receiving impulses from hundreds of places, okay? So if I focus on one, a local potential, okay, if I can focus on one, I can determine what can happen across my entire nerve. So what we know, yes, we'll have something bind to receptors which we just talked about with the synapse. We get the changes started across that plasma membrane. Changes are varied. There are many stimuli that your nervous system is monitoring. Your nervous system is monitoring so much stimuli, like I said before, if you were to try to pay attention, which you can't, okay? Body's not going to let you do it. If you were to try to determine every stimulus coming into your nervous system at one time, okay, you would go insane. If you were to have to pay attention, for example, to your shirt that you are wearing, if you were to have to feel that shirt all the time on every single spot of your skin you would be insane within a few short minutes so we can't monitor all of this information but information is coming into this nervous system in droves okay you're getting information about light heat pain pressure um cold uh Smell, sight, hearing, taste, 
I mean, there is so much information coming in that it would just, if you just like, okay, it, it, it's hard to imagine. So, your stimuli affect what takes place. But regardless of that stimulus, whether it's pain, pressure, touch, whether it's hot, cold, whether it is sound or light or taste, okay? No matter what that stimulus might be, it starts a potential. The potential, okay, means we now have the influx of those sodium ions. Sodium ions move in, therefore we begin to affect my voltage gated. When I affect my voltage gated, the strength can vary. But if that stimulus continues to move in, so if I have a hundred of these, and I don't know, let's say that it's monitoring, um, it's monitoring smell, okay? Now let's not go with special senses, because that's going to come along in part two. Let's go with Okay, let's go back to my example of hitting my toe. Okay? So if I go back to the example of hitting my toe, that means that it's monitoring information about pain, pressure, touch, this sort of thing. So all of a sudden, I hit my toe. And that information begins to come in and come in and come in. And if it comes in and comes in and comes in and comes in, I have now added information together. When we do addition, we sum. Therefore, the information can sum it. If that the case and I have a hundred dendrites and hundred, all hundreds get activated and I make that get that information to this side of my cell body what do you think the chances are of it making of that action potential making it across the body of the cell better or worse better because I had a hundred pieces of information coming in I had a lot of sodium I had a lot of changes taking place I made it across this nerve cell body and I made it to the area of my axon hillock because I got to the axon hillock I get to pass it along as it gets passed along it got to release the in, release the neurotransmitter at the area of my muscles so that when I hit my toe, what did I do? I woo, pulled that thing, I pulled it back, and I started holding it, and I'm like, you know, doing a little dance and everything else. My action potentials, first of all, came in. I had them come in to this one, this one, this one, this one. It was a strong stimulus and therefore made it across and I added to it. So I made it summate because it summated, it went past my threshold because it went past threshold and the all of them principle that exists I got an action potential. Yes. So, let's say that the stimulus that's going to come in, all right, that stimulus.